Hey, it's Vanessa, the Crafty Gemini. I post weekly videos right here on my YouTube channel. And if you've been watching my videos for years, you probably know I'm a sewing machine junkie. And I'm so excited to share with you my review of my new Juki F600. Alright, so here I am with one of my new sewing machines. I recently actually purchased three new machines and they're all Juki's. And so if you've been watching my videos for years, you're probably wondering why is she using Juki sewing machines all of a sudden? I think I've probably used what, maybe seven to 10 sewing machines in my tutorials here on YouTube over the years. And so I wanted to talk to you all a little bit about why I recently made the switch to Juki. So if you follow me on social media, a few months ago, I had a chance to attend my first ever quilt retreat. And I had to fly there, it was in the middle of nowhere, Iowa. And so they lent me a sewing machine. And the machine that uh, I got to use for the whole retreat was actually a Juki TL98, which is quite of an older model. It's kind of like a semi-professional or semi-industrial, I should say, machine. But the features on it were crazy. At first, I was a little intimidated by it. And then once I started using it, I just fell in love. I said, I have to get something like this. So I went out and found a Juki dealer nearby. It's about two hours south from where I live in Florida. And I met Tim, the owner. He owns so many things. It's in Mount Dora, Florida. So if you're in the central Florida area, make sure that you check him out. I'll include a link to his website. And he's also a dealer for a bunch of different sewing machines. He just happens to sell Jukies. So I went in the store and I started to ask him about a Juki that was similar to the 98Q that I had just been using. And so he started showing me a few different machines and telling me about Jukies and I got to play with the machines and I absolutely fell in love. I walked out of there crazy with three different sewing machines. So I'll be doing reviews of each machine for you, but today we're gonna to focus on this F600. So the F600 is part of their Exceed line and the 600 is the top of the line of this Exceed line. So there's an F600, which is this one, then there's an F400 and an F300. And so I wanna make sure that you know right off the bat, they're pretty much identical machines, except that the lower ones don't have quite as much fancy bells and whistles and extra accessories as this one does. All right, so let's get started. This machine is nuts, it's awesome, and I've been using it for a couple months now and I love it. First of all, you can see it's a nice big machine. The throat space on here is about eight inches, okay? So a good wide throat space. If you're a quilter, you can do free motion quilting on this. For piecing, garment sewing, pretty much all of your sewing and quilting needs, you can get done on this machine. The handle is nice and wide. For an expensive machine like this one, I like that it's not just like a little flimsy handle like some other machines have. This one is nice and wide. It also comes with a really hard case. I don't have it here, but it comes with a nice hard protective case. It weighs about 21 pounds, so you can pick it up and take it to class if you want to. I would kind of use this machine because it's kind of fancy uh, and it's quite expensive, so I would leave it at home and maybe get a smaller for travel, but it is I mean, I consider it a heavy duty machine that still has the bells and whistles of, you know, your basic kind of computerized machine models. So let's get into uh, some of the little features. First, I think I'll pop this part open. So it's, it's a cover. You open it and this is where your thread goes. You have your bobbin winder and we have our thread tension here as well. Up top here, you don't have to have the manual with you, but it has the entire key of all the stitches. I believe this model, the 600, has about 225 different stitches. And then of course the F400 is gonna have less than that and the F300 less than that one. So just keep that in mind. So here we have, I put a spool of thread on here. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to thread this machine. And there's a few things that I really like about it. One is, you know, and most machines will have this where it's like, coded to the different numbers. It tells you number one, number two, and so you follow along with the arrows and the lines that they have for you to thread it. We're gonna come down here, three, four. I mean, I can thread this machine, I think, in like six, seven seconds. So I've come up to the thread guide that's uh, right above the needle, and then this machine has an automatic needle thread. All three models of the Exceed, the 300, 400, and the 600 have this automatic needle threader. And so number seven is this little thing up here and you just slip the thread right in that little slot. It's really cool. Then there's a thread cutter on the side of the machine so you can trim your thread. And now I just press this little thing down and let it go. And my needle is threaded. Super duper easy. I can lift my presser foot to relieve that tension and then I can pull my thread out to get started. 
So the automatic needle threader, I have not had a problem with it once. And if you have some kind of newer computerized machine, sometimes it's like a couple of takes to get it to like take and actually thread. And um, I haven't had a problem with this machine. So I really like the needle threader on this. It's not like springy, like some of the other machines I've had, it's like when you pop it down, it just springs and sometimes it doesn't quite catch the needle. This one is kind of like you glide it down and then you let it go slowly and it pulls. It's a, a little bit smoother, I think, and maybe that's why um, it's kind of more seamless to uh, thread the needle. Now let's talk about the bobbin. So this machine has a drop-in bobbin. I pull this little thing, the little plastic case comes off, and I have plastic bobbins for it. So here it is. To uh, put the bobbin in here, real simple. You don't even have to bring the thread up. You know, on some of the older machines, we kind of put the bobbin, thread the machine through the top, and you have to manually take a stitch to bring that bobbin thread up. You don't have to do it with this machine. You just drop your bobbin in there, and then it has little numbers in here for you to guide the thread through. So we go through one in here, two comes back over this way, three this way, and then there's a little blade right in there. So after three, watch this. It just cuts my thread and it's already threaded in there. The bobbin is in place. I just put the little cover back on and I'm ready to start stitching. I don't have to do anything else to it. One thing I do want to make sure that you take note of is the super cool bobbin winder. Notice, um, usually actually, on some machines you have to put the bobbin in there. Sometimes you have to like engage something or press something to get the machine to not stitch and actually engage the bobbin winder. This machine has a separate motor for the bobbin winder. So, for example, let's say I was winding a bobbin. I don't need to wind one right now, but just to show you, I would put the bobbin on the bobbin winder, and there's little blades right there so you can trim your thread quite easily. Once I put it on and it's all threaded through here, you just engage that, and you can see that the bobbin winder starts to spin, and it's super quiet. You rare, barely even hear it, and it will wind the bobbin right there for you and then you just push it back, or it will also automatically stop once um, the bobbin is full, okay? So let's put the bobbin back in here, and let's start talking a little bit about the accessories that come with the machine and the stitches that you can do. So we have all our stitches here. It has a little digital screen for you to see. You can change the knobs. You can adjust everything on here, stitch length, stitch width. One thing I like about this is that the stitch width, a lot of machines, will go up to just five millimeters or six. This machine actually goes up to a seven millimeter width, so it's quite wide. If you want really wide zigzags, you can do that on this machine. And then also by adjusting the width, if you're just on a straight stitch, it's gonna move that needle position over for you. So that's another feature for you to use. Your stitch length, you can go all the way up to a five point millimeter on this one. And then my favorite, favorite thing about the stitches that it has, on the main screen here, it has basically the, the 10 most popular stitches that you would use, you know, your straight stitch, your kind of like a little lightning stitch, it's also called a stretch stitch for, stretch, uh, for sewing on stretch knits and jersey fabrics and stuff. But for quilters, usually these machines are catered towards garment sewers, right? And people that sew clothing. So I was really happy to see that this machine also caters to us quilters. By simply pressing the number two, it's going to give me a piecing stitch, which what is going to happen is that the needle position is gonna bump over so that when I follow the edge of my presser foot, I get that perfect quarter inch seam without having to change out the presser foot to an actual quarter inch uh, presser foot. So let me put it back to the regular one. Just at a straight stitch, the needle position is right in the center. And then when I press number two, you'll see that needle scoot over to the right to give me that quarter inch seam. Now I can just follow my fabric or my patchwork pieces on the edge of the foot and you have a perfect quarter inch seam. So that's super easy. No more bumping up the needle to the side or changing presser feet. I really like that, okay? Now there's tons of memory in here and there's all kinds of features where you can set the machine to kind of take a tack stitch at the beginning, reverse at the end, and just all kind of stuff. But the manual is going to walk you through it. It tells you everything. There's so many stitches I really cannot even start to go into all of them, okay? But let's move over to some of the features that are right here on the front of the sewing machine. There's one that for me these days is an absolute must have and that is my automatic thread cutter. You think that it's not gonna save you a lot of time, but really once you try out a machine or you buy a machine that has it, you can't go back to any others, okay? So I'm briefly gonna show you here how it works. I'm just gonna put my presser foot down, let me get a regular straight stitch, and I'm just gonna press my foot pedal and stitch. Now let me show you something about this machine. If you didn't notice there at the start, it starts off slow even if I floor the foot pedal, which a lot of machines won't do. Sometimes you catch yourself off guard, you have it going at max speed, you floor it, and the thread will come out of your needle. If you've had that happen to you before, you know exactly what I'm talking about because you started off too fast or the thread tail wasn't quite long enough. 
This machine, you won't have that problem. It starts off slow and then it builds up to whatever the max speed is that you have. Now, looking at the front of the machine, it has a speed control. What that means is that the pressure that you put on the foot pedal is not what's controlling how fast you're going. On some more basic machines, you know, you got to press it a little bit if you want to go slow. You got to press it super hard if you want to go fast. On this machine, you can see there's little images. It's like a little tortoise and a hare. So if we put it on the little turtle one and I floor, completely floor my foot pedal, it's still going to go at the slowest speed. If I set it all the way up to the fastest speed, which is usually where I have it because I'm kind of like a speed demon when I'm sewing. You see, I had it floored the entire time, but it starts off with that stitch. Now, I'm going to show you now how the thread cutter works. I'm actually going to use a really cool feature that this machine has that by pressing the heel of my foot pedal, it will do, engage the automatic thread cutter. So let's hear it. There it goes. My threads are cut. I can lift this up and there it is. So let me show you again. I'm going to floor the foot pedal at the fastest speed and watch how the machine starts off slow and then builds up. It's at the fastest speed. I'm flooring the foot pedal. You see, I love that about it. So you're not going to have that problem where the thread comes out from the needle, which I hate because then you have to re-thread the needle every single time when you do that. Now, you have the thread cutter on the front of the machine as well. There's a little yellow button right here under a pair of scissors. And if I press that, it will also cut my threads for me. And then I'm good to go. Now, another thing that it has, which is a, a fabulous feature, especially if you like to work on kind of like the small quilted or craft projects, things that I have a lot of tutorials on, like your zippered pouches or any projects where you have to go around corners and you're pivoting on points, is this needle up down. You want to set it so that the needle stops in. So say I'm sewing and I come up to a corner where I need to pivot. If my needle is up, what happens is you lift the presser foot up and now look, the fabric is moving. So you've lost your spot. Whereas if I'm sewing and I stop with the needle down, I can now lift my presser foot up. And if I pivot my fabric in any direction, I'm still at the same point. So I'm not losing that point. So that's very important. So if you are looking for a machine and you're in the market for one, make sure that it has that needle up down. It's super, super important. It comes in very handy in pretty much all my projects. I always have my machine stop with the needle down. Okay, so that's that feature. And then we have also our reverse stitch here. So when you get to the end of a stitch and you want to reinforce it, just hold that back stitch and you can see it'll go back. You let it go and the machine will stitch forward for you again. And then I cut my threads. I love that I can cut the threads with the heel. Like so the press, the foot pedal is like this. You press it to go and if you just tap the back, it'll cut the threads right there for you. So let's get rid of this fabric. And now let's talk a little bit about the accessories that come with it. Remember, the F600 that I have here is the top of the line. So it's going to have the most stuff. If you are on the market for a machine that's a little bit more affordable, you know, go down and kind of see what accessories come with the 300 or the 400. But you're pretty much going to be getting the same machine and I love it so far. Okay, so let's start with the accessory bin. We can pop this open and we have one layer up top with some presser feet, like a little screwdriver to change out your needles and um, some of the shanks on it if you're attaching a new presser foot that has a shank built into it. You get a couple bobbins in here. You have a seam ripper, a little lint brush, and some feet. Now this model, the F600, comes with 12 different presser feet, which is kind of crazy. It comes with a walking foot. And if you've seen, here it is. I'll show you this one. On all my other machines, I use the walking foot quite often because I do a lot of projects either with stretch knit fabrics or with multiple layers. And so this walking foot is quite substantial. I was excited to see when I held it in my hand that it was chunky. It's not as like the cheap generic ones that you can get. It's like actually one from Juki and it's nice and chunky. It works just fine on this machine. And then some of the other presser feet, I mean, there's tons. And of course, your user manual is going to tell you all about each one and what you can use it for. But let's say you're a quilter. Here we have our edge stitching foot. It has a guide going right down the center. So say you're not into free motion quilting just yet, but you are a beginning quilter and you want to finish your own projects, you can do your own stitch in the ditch quilting with this presser foot and it already comes with the machine. Then we have, uh, you know, your zipper foot. I love, love, love this clear foot. Sometimes I use it for applique, but then I look in the rest of the bin and this machine also comes with an open toe foot specifically for applique. I mean, look how big the opening is on that. You'll be able to see all your stitches, whether you're doing a blanket stitch or maybe you're just finishing up your fusible applique with a zigzag, you'll be able to see exactly what you're doing 
with this foot and it's metal so it's not like a, a plastic one it also comes with like a little teflon foot which is smooth on the bottom so if you're stitching over like vinyls and some of that stickier fabrics that you know may not glide that easily through your machine it also comes with your free motion quilting foot so it's already here for you to start off um, and use it has needles it has this really really awesome buttonhole foot look how massive this thing is and I haven't tried it out yet but according to the dealer some of the more industrial machines use this type of buttonholer and he was like I wish every machine came with one like this so I'm excited to see uh, the types of, of buttonholes that I can do you could obviously fit in the button in here and it will read the size of the button and it will make a buttonhole according to the size of the button that you plan to use so you don't have to do any of that mathematical stuff the, the foot itself will do it for you. It comes with 12 feet total, including the little universal, you know, the basic one that you're usually gonna have on your machine, so that's fine. So if you go ahead and pick up the F300 or the F400, make sure that you see what type of accessories is coming with it, because they don't all come with, what, like I said earlier, what this machine comes with. Now, some of the other things that it comes with is a knee lift. Where is it? Right here. If you've seen this before, maybe you have a machine that came with it and you have no idea how to use it. So this actually plugs in right here at the bottom of the machine and it's meant to be used while you're sitting down, not while you're standing up like I am right here, but I'll show you how it works. So say I put my presser foot down and I'm sewing. And now I'm gonna stop with the needle down and I need to pivot my fabric. Under here with my knee, you would just, I'm gonna do it with my hand. When I press on it, you can see that it lifts that presser foot right up for me. So now your hand's free. I can lift it with my knee, turn my fabric. Once you let it go, the presser foot is gonna drop right back down to where you need to be. You can keep on stitching and it works just like that. So now you have more time and more space to work with your hands. If you're working with fidgety fabrics or ruffles and you're kind of trying to get things to work in place and you don't wanna let go, you know, have both your hands on there to kind of be lifting up the presser foot, just install the knee lifter and you can use that, okay? Now, the other thing that this machine comes with, and the other models don't come with it, so for me, this was a big selling point because I'm a quilter and I absolutely need this. And even when you're working on larger projects, is the extension table. Look at this thing. So when the extension table is on, you get four and a half inches in height here at the throat space, and all the way from here to the end of the extension table is a full 21 and three quarter inches. That's quite big. You can definitely quilt your big quilts on there by yourself. So let me show you how it would go on. You can see underneath here the legs, they just pop out. It's super simple to install like this. Okay. And then let me set this here while I remove this one. So you can remove this entire, I think they call it an auxiliary arm or something, just the accessory bin. So now I'm exposing the free arm which once you do that, down here you have the option to leave your feed dogs up or put them down. So some people prefer to put their feed dogs down when they're doing like thread painting or free motion quilting. So of course you have that option there as well. And then our extension table. Let me scoot this out because it's a big one. And it's just gonna slide right in here. And now you have all this space, okay? To do your free motion quilting and work on your larger projects that you may need a little bit more room for. Also, I said earlier, from the center of the needle position to the end here, the throat space is eight inches, okay? So that's quite substantial. So I think it's a pretty big machine. You can get tons of work with it done, uh, work on a variety of projects. Pretty much anything that you can sew and quilt, you can do it on this machine, okay? And I love that it actually came with features for quilters, not just like, oh, you can quilt because it's a sewing machine, but that they thought about quilters, right? With the little pressing the number two and having your quarter inch. A piecing guide. It also has like some some stitches built in here for a crazy quilting type of stitches and a lot of other stuff. You can play around with the memory and kind of design your own stitches. Oh, this machine also comes with four different fonts. So for quilting labels or for just, you know, putting a little note on the back of a project or putting kids' names inside their shirts, their clothes, and some of the things that kids take to like daycare and school like that, that would be a great option to do. Oh my goodness, I almost forgot to tell you guys. The lighting. Lighting, lighting, lighting is key when you are sewing. If you're like me, well, how I was up until a few weeks ago, you probably have like a lamp here, a lamp here. We usually are sewing late at night, right? Especially quilters or people that have kids and have busy lives. You work during the day and you're sewing at night. We need good lighting. This machine, and this is the only model of, this, of the Exceed line that has this. So we already know most of our machines have a light right here at the needle. Well, that's not the only place that we need to see, right? So we need some type of lighting here, especially when we have a large bed. 
This machine has an LED light built in right here. So when you turn on the machine, this light comes on and this one comes on. So it has two built-in LED lights. They're super bright, they're great. And I actually uh, purchased some LED lights for another machine and I wanted to install it here. And then I looked and I said, wait a minute, I don't need that much light. And when I looked to see what it was, there was already an LED installed. So the F600 comes with that secondary light, which I think is awesome, that we definitely need it. Um, and I thought that was a great key point to have. Really the only thing that I found so far in my experience using this machine as a, a con or something that I wish it wasn't the way it is, is that the plug, like the connection cord, is two separate ones. It's not a big deal for most people, but if you have a ridiculous sewing machine collection like I do, I have so many foot pedals and AC cords, it's just nuts. So if it all came in one, like some of them do, you know, they kind of split, one goes into the machine, it leads out to the foot pedal, the other one leads out to plug into the wall. This one is two separate ones. So I wish it was kind of all put together in one so I wouldn't run the risk of losing them because all the cords look the same and I have like 15 sewing machines. So that's one thing personally, but I just have to label it. It's not a big deal. There's another quick thing, and I think I'll leave this at that, is that on the hand turning wheel, so when we're using the automatic needle threader, a lot of people don't know this. On whatever machine you have, this applies, okay? If the needle is not in the highest position that it can possibly be, that needle threader is not gonna work because it's designed to have, it has a little tiny hook that when you engage it, it comes through the needle eye and it has to go through so then the thread can hook on it. So when you let it go, it pulls it through that needle eye and that's how it threads your needle. So if you can get up close to your needle and your needle threader, you may find out that that's why your automatic needle threader isn't working. So to save you on that, the hand wheel here has a ridge on it and it has a mark on the sewing machine. So you don't have to like try and gauge, you know, kind of move that hand wheel to figure out where the needle is in the top in the highest position. If you turn your hand wheel towards you and line up the line on the hand wheel with the line on the machine, at that point is when the needle is at the highest position. So super quick, I mean, it's not a big deal, but I wish more manufacturers would do things like that. And it's just a quickie way of me knowing like, okay, just turn it, boom, it's there, and now I can thread it, okay? As a quilter, you know, you already saw me stitch through the 100% quilting cotton. Home decor fabrics, super easy. And I'm just gonna breeze right through here. And then I'll get to my final denim test. As you guys know, if you've watched my videos for years, you know in all my sewing machine reviews, I always show you how many layers of denim the machine can go through. So we'll get to that in a second. So this is just like your home decor weight. Cotton fabric, two layers of that. And the stitches are really, really nice. I'm really happy with the stitch quality on this machine. Fleece projects, if you're working on winter things, costumes. And notice that I'm using the automatic thread cutter every time I stop stitching, and I don't have to bring the bobbin thread up. Look, I have a little bit of thread left here, and even though I'm flooring the machine, it's not unthreading my needle, because again, the machine starts off slow and builds up to that max speed. Uh, that was fleece, stitches look great. Now we'll do a really lightweight, this is almost like a tissue weight jersey. So this is the kind that when you tug on it, it rolls on you. And I'm gonna do this with a stretch stitch, which is what I would use for this. And so we'll see if it doesn't ripple the fabric or pucker it too much on me without using the, the walking foot. Cause usually I would recommend putting in the walking foot. I'm just gonna do it with the way that it is there. This is my stretch stitch number three. All right, let's check this out. Look at that, the fabric lays so nice and flat that definitely will hold up a ton of different garments. It's nice and small, but you can also adjust it. So if you want the width to be a little bit wider, you can adjust that, adjust your length, just by turning the knobs right here on the front. And the machine will beep when you reach the max, either the max or the minimum length or width, whatever, you know, so you know that that's as far as you can go, okay? And now let's get to the denim. So for denim, I'm gonna use a basic straight stitch and I'm going to elongate my uh, stitch length a little bit more. The more bulkier the layers you are, you don't really wanna be working with really, really tight stitches. So let's do two layers of denim. We have one and two. And notice I haven't adjusted any tension settings or anything because let me bump up here and show you something real quick. This machine has an auto tensioner. So if you look up at the needle uh, thread tensioner, I have it set to auto and that usually will work with your base, you know, for your basic sewing and quilting projects, you can use it, usually have it on auto just fine. If you are going to be adjusting and changing to maybe like metallic threads 
or your uh, clear threads and things like that and adjusting it maybe also to lightweight and like really slinky see-through fabrics then you can still go ahead even though it's automatic here you can still go ahead and up the tension or lower it depending on your project and your user manual also will have some guidelines to that so here we are two layers of denim like nothing great stitch quality and this is denim from like a pair of jeans. This is not a lightweight denim. We're going to add two more to that. So here we have now four layers of denim. And I think that feature that I mentioned about the machine starting off slow and building up, I think it also really helps when you're sewing through bulky layers. Because if you know, if you've tried to stitch through like a ton of layers of fleece really quickly, you're going to break that needle, your thread is going to break, it's going to get jammed up. And so because it starts off slow and builds itself up, it really helps with that. So we had four, we're going to add two more. Here we have six layers of denim. And normally the fancier machines with, you know, with all the bells and whistles, they aren't really heavy duty like this to sew through all these layers of denim because they're not made for this, right? They're more about featuring the bells and whistles, the decorative stitches, and look at this. There's six. Let's go for another two, what do you think? <laughs> all right, so let's do eight layers of denim. I mean, look at that. Never, ever would I need to sew through something like this, but we're going to give it a go anyways, just so you can see the type of machine that this is. Incredible. So there you have it. I have to say that the Juki F600 definitely passed my test for all the different types of sewing and quilting needs that I have. And it also definitely passed the eight layer denim test. So for more information on any of the Juki Exceed models like the F600 I've featured in this video, make sure to contact Tim at so many things. So that's it for my video review of my brand new Juki F600. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to hit it with the thumbs up below, share it across the different social media sites, and don't forget to click the subscribe button so you won't miss out on any of my future videos. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.